Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. No thank you. Um, I am at the end of a three and a half year relationship with a meth addict. Um, my God, I I love him dearly. Um, I don't have anything left to do but walk away. Um, his life is completely debilitated. Um, he, the only, the saddest part of this whole thing is he doesn't even notice that. Um, I've, I'm pretty much done beating my head against the wall and being blamed for his entire existence. Um, I can't seem to do anything right, and I, uh, I don't know, I've, I've like, lost my way as well in life. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of money involved here to get him some help. Um, he's tried to go to a couple of places, um, that are kind of beaten up and, you know, not uh, the healthiest of surroundings. I mean, he doesn't stay. He stays a day or two and and, and walks out. And um, I just don't know if there's any, any help available out there, you know, three days, five days, something as a jumping off point. And, yeah, and you know, of, well, let me just just say, first of all, meth yeah. addiction is probably one of the worst addictions that, that's around right now. And um, getting people even to realize that they're, in a place where they need to get help is extremely hard. It's it's and it probably has one of the highest relapse rates of any drug out there, except for probably heroin, mm -hmm. which I think is in about the ninety percent range. So, um, you know, my main concern though is that uh, you've obviously made a choice that uh, you're in an unhealthy relationship, and I think people that that end up. Um, slowly getting sucked into relationships with addicts don't realize that they're actually developing an abusive relationship with that person and that they're actually the victim of, of a lot of verbal and physical oftentimes abuse and it becomes normal because they blame the addiction um, and not the person as well so um, one of the first things I would suggest is that you actually get help for yourself um, Great idea. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, uh, you know, you're going to survive if you get help. But if you don't, you're going to get swallowed up into his addiction as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, when people are in a relationship like that, them going and getting help themselves will often sometimes help the other person get help because they'll be able to set a positive example and they'll know better how to handle the addict and what the addict's doing and what the addict's saying. What, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, and I could speak from both both a personal and professional standpoint. I think that um, codependency, uh, I'm going to use that term in and of itself, uh, is an addiction. You know, people have, people, drug addicts have a codependency with the drug. It helps them cope with things. It helps them escape from things. And I think relationships can do the same thing. Um, and like Andrew said, sometimes actually getting help for yourself and taking care of yourself is actually the better thing for the other person. Sometimes it might feel like walking away would be painful and sometimes it's just the wake up call people need. I'm not suggesting that's necessarily what you do, but that's probably the fear um, in terms of getting help that that might happen. But people often don't realize that simply by making a commitment to living well themselves and taking care of themselves, they can actually create um, wellness for the other person. You know, I also find that a lot of people that are in a relationship and then they have to decide to walk away feel a lot of shame and guilt. And <laughs> that they're that they're giving up on the person, and really, that's not the right feelings. I mean, I get that people feel them, and it's right for them to feel those feelings, but that's a perspective that's very internalized, where you're actually taking responsibility for the other person, and and you shouldn't have to feel shame and guilt about taking care of yourself as well. So, you and, know. and and addicts and alcoholics have an amazing way. Right, and, and nobody deserves to be abused emotionally or physically. And when addicts get to the point where they're they're not willing to get help, or they're just they're just there and not right, it's always important to sort of like leave a door open if they want to get help and set a boundary, saying, yeah. you know what, if you're willing to get help, I'll do everything I can to help. But right. if you're not willing to get help, then I have to set a boundary for myself where I take care of myself first, and then if you get help, then maybe we can discuss re-entering a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I like to think of the analogy of parenting. 
Uh, when we when we think of parenting, we think that we know that it's supposed it's important to sell, set healthy boundaries for your children, not to enable them to continue. I mean, I don't even have children myself, but you just know this, you learn this, not to enable them to continue unsafe behaviors, and you need to set rules. And I think that the same thing applies in relationships. Um, we need to cultivate each other's health and allow people to be healthy. If we don't set those boundaries, uh, oftentimes people go off the deep end and they can be the most loving, sensitive person and you can love so many things about them. But love isn't just being there and letting them do what they're doing. Love is helping them get better. And sometimes that means helping yourself get better so that they have to have that wake-up call. And, so, and we're so missing let's the talk point. about let's, how you know, are we going to get Renee she, yeah, How is she going to yeah. get help? How, like, Renee, yeah. you're in Los Angeles. <laughs> it's one thing to talk about. Yeah. It's another Renee, thing you're, to get it done. you're in Los Angeles. Um, you're familiar, you know, listen, there's a bunch of different approaches that you could take right now. You know, okay. obviously there's therapy, there's outpatient treatment to help you deal with this, you know, and there's going to meetings like Al-Anon, 12 step meetings are absolutely free, but a good suggestion would be it's therapy sometimes is so important. So you're not, you've been doing this obviously for three and a half years, right. Andrew, we got to get this woman help tonight. And please, please. I, I, I have reached out for three of the last three and a half years and I'm, I'm in the same position if not worse. Okay, so we're not talking well, we about have, him. We've right. actually just started doing assessments for in our harm reduction track at our outpatient. Are, you're in LA? I am. Okay, so yes. we're going to put you on hold and um, we're doing free assessments for people um, and you know, from there we can help you either get help somewhere else or figure something out from there. Yeah, we're not going to okay. let you have to go through this by yourself, Renee. And Thank the you so much. I just want to tell you something, Renee. Mm -hmm. The courage that you have to call in tonight forget about i mean not just helping yourself i want you to when you go to bed later i want you mm -hmm. to realize you've helped so many people out Thank there you. that are going through the same exact thing and i don't want you to lose touch with us we're going to stay with you yes, i want to say something really quick go for, for, for everybody too out there is i have set boundaries and he just walks away and stays away Right. And then I run back. <laughs> right. right, and that's yeah. why we were talking you know, about yeah. you getting And help. I think that's yeah. why we get so sick is because, okay, you know, I'm not going to see you until you do such and such. And he's like, okay, fine, I won't do anything. Right. And but remember away. also, running, <laughs> running away is a passive-aggressive act, which, <laughs> you know, so he's actually being aggressive to you and, mm -hmm. and damaging you by being absent. Mm -hmm. and right. he's, punishing, he's punishing yep. you and it, it hurts yep. you. You sit there worrying about him. Right. Worry about, right. So that's a very aggressive act, even though it seems like he's not acting. I think that's even so worse. You it know? it like, can be worse because there's know, all that doubt in your head. Emotional abuse you know? like, is sometimes far worse than physical abuse because... It's, well, they're both pretty hard. No, that's not. But that's not. And I'm not saying they're yeah. not. You know, but it, it's as bad to me sometimes. Emotional abuse. Horrible. It is. So Renee, and I'm like in a nightmare all the time. Renee, our hashtag yeah. tonight was coming out of the shadows, and I got to tell you, you've done that. I want you to stay on hold. We're going to try and get. Thank we're going to do everything we can to help you. And Renee, if, you. when you come in, uh, hopefully to the outpatient, yeah. hopefully I'll be able to drop by and say hi. So I will. I'll be there. I promise. Okay. Right. Thank you. Very Just good. hold thank on. Thank you. I will. Thank you okay. all so much. You're thank welcome. you. If you're in need of immediate assistance or just have questions, the professionals at Clean Treatment Centers are standing by right now.